Loretta Young. Good evening, Miss Loretta Young. Hello. How are you tonight? Healthy and happy, I hope. Tonight we have two letters, and both from men. Now, although these two gentlemen have never met each other, as so often occurs in our experience, one seems to answer the other. This one says there are certain sets of circumstances in life that no one should be expected to tolerate, much less live with, because no good can come from it. And this one tells of what happened to him in one of these so-called intolerable situations. He mentions the date, July the 22nd, 1952, and the place, a small town in Southern California. Now, he starts his story the night before the date he mentions. This is his house, the only one on the street. And this is his wife, Emily. Roy likes this cologne. It's his very favorite. That fellow leaves a breath in him to sniff with. Don't worry about it, Gwen. He's very safe with Lloyd. Yeah. He's not even a doctor, is he? No, he isn't, but he's one of the finest physical therapists in the state. And he's taken very good care of Roy for over three years now. All I say is you're putting too much faith in him. Why, Emily, don't you realize that with Roy out like this, Roy's whole life is in his hands. I know him. Sixteen and a half minutes. Is he out of his mind? Why, it's far too long. Gwen, don't say anything. Great. You're doing great. No more. No more. For heaven's sake, mister, that's enough. That's it. Oh, oh you, you're terrific. Seventeen minutes, breathing all on your own. Next time we go for eighteen. And no satisfying you, eh? Not till I have you up on your feet and fighting. Johnny, you were wonderful. And for your prize, you're going to have lemon pie for dessert. Your sister's own special, okay? Gwen, you did it again. Here, I hope you'll have strength left to taste some. This boy has got the strength to do anything he really wants to. Yeah. All in good time, of course. Of course, that's what I always say. All in good time and no need to... I guess we... Kind of overdid it a little. You all right, Roy. You're bound to be tired after being out for the first time so long, but... Bound to be all right. What I always say is if you just... Each time it'll get easier. You'll see, Roy. You'll see. Yes. Maybe we'll all see. Too late. It's good of you to come down here each week from Santa Barbara to see your brother like this. What I always say is, lemons are wonderful. And pie. Emily, you look as if you could use a breath of fresh air. See Lloyd down the way. Yeah. So long, Lloyd. I'll be right back, darling. It's gonna be warm tonight. Huh? Sticky. Yeah. Lloyd. Um, I'm worried. What for? Didn't you just see your husband break a record in there? If you want to know, it was 17 and a half minutes. Is that really good? Well, how do I know? If that's his limit, of course it's good. But you think he could do better, don't you? Yeah. He isn't trying anymore, is he? Well, no. Not as much as he used to. I know. Well, the... Uh... Sight seems to have gone out of him. Oh, he jokes still. I mean, he says all the right things, but he... I don't know. I think he's just stopped believing that he'll get well. Loving him like you do, Em. He'll have to believe again someday. Yeah, I know, but... Well, 
I might have expected it. What's that, Gwen? What else? Two of them, of course, out there. Hmm? Well, you heard him ask her out there. Gwen, what are you getting at? Nothing. Nothing at all. None of my business. They want to hold hands right out in the street. Oh, <laughs> you're crazy. Am I? Just am I now. When she comes in, you take a look for yourself and see if she hasn't been crying. Crying? Emily? For my part, I've seen enough. I must hurry or I'll miss my bus. See you next Wednesday. Goodbye, Gwen. Say hello to Harry. Mm -hmm. Lloyd. Lloyd and Emily. But it's not her fault. She's not to blame. Hi. You miss me? Yeah, where have you been all day? Turn around town? <laughs> you bet. Gwen says to tell you she'll be here at 11 o'clock instead of 1 o'clock next Wednesday, okay? Got a cigarette? Yeah, you bet. And Lord wants to know if you mind skipping the gin game tonight. No, no, I don't mind. He's driving up to see Roger. <laughs> Poor Gwen. Did you get what Lloyd said about the lemon? Yeah, she's a card, all right. Yeah. I'm going to give her a samba lesson. <laughs> Relax her a little. Well, you taught me. Did I? You bet. You were great. Well, match. What else? <laughs> Maybe you should try it again before your Gwen's age. I will. As soon as my partner's ready. Yeah, sure. The only thing is, honey, maybe you better watch the mothballs and the old tux. Or maybe tuxes won't be in style by then. That's not funny. Not her. Uh, no, huh? I guess I'd better get me a new gag man. I'll say. I must be going stay on. Darling, don't go stay on. I told you I'm going to get me a new gag man. No, no, no. I don't mean about the jokes. I mean you and your heart. Yourself, your belief in yourself. Don't lose it. Okay, baby. How about a little shave before dinner, huh? I guess I don't look very pretty here. Ah, you look fine to me. Well, portrait of a lady barber going to work. Ready? No, no, no. I'm tired, honey. Sure, baby. Sure. Can I have another drag? Yeah. When Gwen comes next week, Maybe you could get Lloyd to take you shopping or something. Lloyd, oh, good heavens, and he's a busy man. I couldn't do that. <laughs> he's kind of a good-looking guy. Yeah, I guess so. This contraption was, must seem like a horrible monster to you. Oh, darling. Turn out the lights and what do you see? A dragon breathing in the dark. But, honey... Okay, okay. It's a nice dragon. Because it breathes for me. Well, darling, you can breathe yourself now. Seventeen minutes today. Why, Lloyd says that it was just wonderful. Do we have to quote Lloyd all the time? No, of course not. I know that. Lloyd's a great guy. Everything's fine. It's just me. Darling, everybody has moods, and you're just in a mood, that's all. How about a little music to relax you, huh? Okay. Yes, sir. Everything really is going to be all right, Roy. You'll see. All you got to do is just stop. Oh, my pressure cooker! Stop breathing, maybe. Don't think. 
just sleep. Just breathe easily now. Slowly and easily. In, out. In, out. In. That's good, that's good. Now just keep it up. I'm sure it won't be long now before the power's on again. Roy, relax. Relax, you know. That's right. Now breathe in. Slowly. Out. That's right. Now in. Now out. Just like you did when Lloyd was here. Come on, in. Now out. That's good. That's good. Come up. Now keep that up, darling. Keep it up. And I'm going to call the light and power company. All right? In. Out. In. Out. In. Operator, get me the light and power company quickly, please. The light and power. Power. The light and power. power. We're the doing the best we can. I'm sorry. I'll make this important. Right. Department of Light and Power. Department of Light and Power. I had your call. Yes, we're doing the best we can. Yes, the men. Iron Lung. 1208 Willow Way. That's Ray Pearson, isn't it? Yes. We have that report here. We have all the iron lung cases on top priorities. I see. Uh, how long will it be? As soon as we can. All right. Good, dear. You're doing fine. Uh, fine. How long? Just as soon as they can, dear. They've got all the iron lungs on top priority. Now keep it up. Keep it up. Out. In. That's good. You've got a nice rhythm. Now keep it up. Come on. Out. That's fine. That's fine. Now you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go out and get you a glass of water, and I'll bet you anything by the time I'm back, the power's on again, okay? Good. There's another one. No. It's all right. It's only a small one. Not so small. Come on, breathe. See what they're saying on the radio. I will, dear. But relax, Ray. That's it. Now relax. Easily now. In. Out. In. Out. That's good. In. Out. In. Oh. I'm sorry. I, I forgot the power is off. What is it? I can't breathe. You can. You can go and try. All right, all right, all right. That's right, ma'am. We do have you on a priority list. They'll have it fixed just as quickly as possible. It's been an hour. Over an hour. And what I'm trying to tell you is, the longest he's ever been out of the lung before is 
20 minutes. 17. Just a minute, operator. Don't talk to her. Save your energy. I just want to make them hurry, that's all. Yes, operator. What? Oh. All right, hurry, please. We're trying. Oh, come on, Joan. You better get home and get some rest. I can take over. I don't want to leave until I find out he's all right. They get so tired, you know. I was with my brother in General Hospital when he had it. Department of Light and Power. not trying hard enough, Roy. Please. I don't want to. Oh, of course you do. Come on now. I don't care. Of course you care, dear. Come on. Come on. I'm no good to anybody. I'm quitting. Roy. Roy. You can't quit. Roy, listen to me. Roy, you don't understand. You mean everything in this world to me. In a lung or out of a lung, it doesn't make any difference to me. It's you I love, darling. It's you I love. Oh, please, Roy, I wouldn't want to live without you. Come on, darling. Breathe. Breathe, Roy, please. Okay, sweetheart. He's <laughs> uh, a good boy. That's a good boy, Roy. Oh, Roy. I love you, darling. I love you. Oh. Come in. I'm from the Department of Light and Power, ma'am. How is he? Why is not it fixed yet? We're doing the best we can. There's a break in the main line. Oh. He's so tired. Can't you please hurry? Hurry it up. I think you ought to know, ma'am. It may be another hour. Oh. I'm sorry, darling. Here, let me take over for you for a while. No, no, no I'm afraid you. Get, get worried. Dear, he's out of town. Remember? He should have a pull motor. Have you called the fire department? I did, but I can't get through. Their lines are all tied up. Well, I'll go get them. Yes. Hurry, will you? Good boy. I can't, darling. You remember? He went to see Roger. And that had to be. Boy, lady, I gotta take my hat off to you. Almost four hours. You must have worked like a dog. You saved his life. The power! The power is back on! Quick, get him back in. Darling, darling, it's all right. The power's back on now. Everything's fine. 
all done. We interrupt this program for a special announcement. Casualties in the disastrous earthquake that struck Tehachapi at 1.16 and shook Los Angeles this morning at 1.47 have risen sharply. M. Yeah. Lloyd's in Tehachapi. Yeah. In Tehachapi, hundreds were injured and scores were hurt, badly enough for hospital treatment. The death toll has now reached 11. Please, God, don't let him be one of the eleven. Hello? Is that 021? Yes. You have an emergency call from the Hatchaby. One moment, please. It's from the Hatchaby. Go ahead, please. Hello? Emily? Lloyd! It is, it's Lloyd! Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. He's fine. Thanks, God. Is everything all right there? Yeah. Everything's just fine now. Well, the power went out down here for about four hours. You know, Lloyd, he was wonderful. He tried so hard for so long. Yeah. I just know he's going to get well now. Sure. Sure, I'll tell him. You're right. Goodbye, Lloyd. Oh, darling, you were wonderful. You are wonderful. To think it took an earthquake to knock some sense into me. Miss Young asked me to remind you that our story tonight concerned only one case in which emergency assistance could not be given immediately. She also wanted me to tell you how very grateful we are to the Los Angeles County General Hospital for their helpful technical advice and to the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis for their help to us on this program. Thank you, Bob. You know, the mere fact that Roy was able to write this letter indicates a great deal to me. It seems that there are all kinds of earthquakes. Those turmoils that happen within and those that happen around us and for both, there is a good reason, if we but knew or had faith. But wait. It says it here even better. It's from the New Testament. Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven, that those things that cannot be shaken may remain. Good night. See you next week. <laughs>